Hello to all students. I hope you are doing fine. This is Professor Masood Fuzal. In this video lecture, we are going to discuss cerebral infarction, which is commonly known as strokes, its types and its causes and symptoms and treatments all the way. So I have already made a diagram for you. So let's discuss uh, cerebral infarction or stroke in detail. Cerebral infarction, which is known as stroke, if you look at the meaning of cerebral infarction, cerebral refers to the brain parts, any part of the brain, especially cerebrum. Infarction is known as cell death. When there is a death of the tissues of the brain, that is known as cerebral infarction, which is usually due to the poor blood flow to brain, which causes the cell death. So when there is a less supply or minimum supply or absolutely not supply of blood to different parts of the brain or any part of the brain which causes the death of the different parts of the brain or any part of the brain which can lead to a stroke which is known as cerebral infarction. So first of all we are going to discuss different types of stroke. So there are three major types of strokes. Number one hemorrhagic stroke, number two ischemic stroke and number three transient ischemic stroke which is also known as mini stroke. So first of all I am going to discuss Hemorrhagic stroke. Hemorrhagic stroke is usually due to the rupture of blood vessel in the brain which causes blood flow in the different parts of the brain. So this is a stroke which is due to the which is due to the bleeding. So look at this diagram. This is a diagram right over here. This is a part of brain and these are blood vessels which are supplying blood to different parts of the brain. Now look over here right over here the blood vessel has been ruptured and the blood has flown out of the blood vessel into the brain when blood comes out of the blood vessel it uh, clot over there and a condition is known as hypoxia which uh, reduces the uh, blood supply to the brain which is uh, uh, less amount of oxygen is supplied to the brain so the the cells over here they lack oxygen and they cause tissue death this tissue death lead to cerebral infarction which is known as stroke and which is known as hemorrhagic stroke. So if we look at the causes of the hemorrhagic stroke, so there are different causes which can cause hemorrhagic stroke. Number one is brain trauma. So whenever we have our trauma on the brain due to the falling or something it fell on or struck with the brain, uh, struck with the head uh, which can uh, burst the blood vessel and, leaks and leads to bleeding which can cause stroke. Number two, brain tumor there are cancerous tumor if there is a cancerous tumor inside if inside the part of a brain which can cause the bursting of blood vessel inside the brain which can lead to bleeding can cause also hemorrhagic stroke the number three cause is arteriovenous malformation sometime uh, blood vessels of the brain like arteries and veins they stop function properly and due to their that they become very weak and disoriented and they rupture and blood comes out of these blood vessels and causing a stroke. Number four cause is aneurysm. Aneurysm is a condition in which a blood vessel becomes weak and bulges out and finally ruptures and leading to the bleeding and causes the hemorrhagic stroke. So if we look at the second type of major type of stroke which is known as ischemic stroke ischemic stroke is usually lack of blood flow to different parts of the brain or any part of the brain so look at this diagram so this is a part of brain right over here and these are blood vessels which are supplying blood to different tissues and different parts of the brain right over here in the blue section of the diagram you can see that the blood supply to this part of the brain has been reduced or, or has been blocked and that is why this area of the brain has become dead due to the lack of oxygen and lack of the blood. So this will cause a stroke which is a major cause of uh, cerebral infarction or stroke which is known as ischemic stroke. If we look at the causes of this type of stroke, so there are different causes. Number one is thrombosis. Thrombosis is a condition in which thrombus is formed inside the blood vessels like arteries and veins. So when we have high amount of lipids, bad lipid, LDL, inside the uh, NDL and 
HDL uh, if there is high lipid profile which can cause bad cholesterol which can cause uh, clock plaque formation plaque formation can leads to uh, a thrombus a clot inside the blood vessel which can reduce the blood flow to different parts of the body so thrombosis is a condition which can leads to uh, ischemic stroke the second condition is known as embolism look at this diagram right over here this is an artery and in this artery you can see a clot a plaque a, which is formed of lipid lipoid material uh, this is blocking this artery right over here and leading the uh, black of lack of blood to different parts of the brain right over here i have taken this uh, artery right from over here so this is known as thrombosis embolism is also a condition in which thrombus which is formed inside the blood vessel can dislodge from its place and move to other part of the body so for example if thrombus is formed inside the neck or inside heart or inside legs when it dislodges from that place and with the flow of blood it went into the arteries of the brain and caused the blockage of the artery right over here and uh, causing the uh, stoppage of the blood to this part of the brain so that will leads to the stroke so thrombosis and embolism both are major causes of this type of stroke number 3 systemic hyperfusion in this condition uh, usually there is a less amount of blood flow due to different causes to different parts of the brain number 4 cerebral venous sinus thrombosis in this condition there are different sinuses present inside the brain which can uh, uh, the blood can be accumulate in these sinuses due to thrombus formation or uh, blood can be reduced uh, flow due to different reason that can also lead to uh, stroke so if we know uh, if we look at the third type of the stroke which is known as transient ischemic stroke which is also known as mini stroke which is a very uh, light form of stroke and it is very temporary and it can be treated very easily Uh, in the certain part of the brain or any part of the brain uh, same thing any ischemic uh, circular ischemic stroke can happen or hemorrhagic stroke can happen but it is a very in minute amount or very small stroke which can be treated very easily now let's look at the risk factors which can lead to these type of stroke and uh, first of all high blood cholesterol level as i already mentioned that low uh, high uh, bad cholesterol ldl and hdl which can uh, cause uh, uh, thrombus formation and this thrombus formation can block the arteries and leads to uh, different types of strokes number 2 the major cause of the stroke is diabetes mellitus if the sh uh, sugar level or glucose level in the blood is too high and it is not manageable which can also lead to stroke uremia which is also known as end stage renal failure which is uh, kidney disease which can also lead to a stroke smoking is a major factor in the uh, formation of clots and thrombosis or embolism heart disease and also can lead to a stroke hypertension which is also known as high blood pressure is a major uh, major factor in hemorrhagic stroke because too much high blood pressure can uh, cause the rupture of the blood vessel inside the brain and causing a stroke anticoagulation anticoagulation is the use of medicine which uh, make blood thin so too much use of anticoagulants or blood thinner can also makes the blood very thin and which can also easily bleed inside the brain which is causing the hemorrhagic uh, blood uh, stroke diet which is very high in protein high in lipids and uh, poor diet junk food and not a balanced diet which can also lead to many problems inside the body in from in one of them is also a stroke so how do we know that a person is having a stroke so there are some symptoms Uh, through which we can determine the person is having a stroke number 1 major symptom is hemiplegia the half face of the uh, person or half body of the person is not working properly so uh, by if you if you ask the person to smile half of the face of the person will be moving um, smiling while the other half will not be and is smiling so this is a major symptom so you can judge from that that this person is having a stroke numbness Uh, people, the person having a stroke can feel numbness in different parts of the body like hands like fingers like arms like any other part of the body altered senses 
there are different senses like smell taste hearing uh, touch they can also all all changes at all and you the person having a stroke cannot distinguish different taste smell and uh, having a speech problem also balance problem the person uh, uh, does not have a proper balance and it will uh, and he or she will fall down uh, through by walking because uh, the total balance has been lost arm weakness person cannot uh, raise uh, his or her arms and that will also lead to that will that is a major symptom that will tell you that the person having a uh, stroke speech difficulty person cannot uh, pronounce words properly and having a very difficult to speak so that is also a symptom of stroke so what should we do whenever you see a person having any one of the symptom you must call an ambulance or emergency take it to the emergency or to see a doctor and doctor will decide and take some test to determine which type of stroke and what is the severity of the stroke and and which part of the brain is affected after that he, he the doctor will decide which treatment is needed to so usually the severe form of stroke leads to the death of the patient but if the stroke is mild and the person can survive and uh, but uh, it will become disabled for a long period of the life and for some time for whole life so it is very important that we must avoid uh, stroke and if not then we have to go through all the consequences so in the treatment usually uh, if the it is due to the clot formation thrombus formation embolism Uh, blood thinners are usually used to uh, remove the clot remove the blockage which is also known as clot busters medicine which dissolve the clot so that the blood flow to the different parts of the brain can be uh, eased uh, it, at the same time lt plase is also enzyme which is uses the which which uh, breaks down the clot can be used uh, anticoagulant as i already mentioned blood thinners which are used to uh, make the blood thin so that the blood flow to the parts of the brain can be um, uh, anti hypertensive if the uh, blood pressure is too high and it is due to the hypertension then certain medications are used to normalize the blood sugar, blood uh, blood sugar or excuse me uh, high blood pressure and the same way if the it is due to the diabetes mellitus then certain medications are used to um, bring back the normal blood glucose level if the if the clot is formed on the on the surface of the blood or in the on the top of the blood or on the outside of the blood surface then surgery can be performed and the clot can be removed by surgically uh, even sometime if the arteries have been blocked in the brain and some stent can also be introduced into the blood vessels to op- to widen the artery so that the blood supply to the brain can be increased or enhanced Uh, if uh, none of these treatment work then there are certain therapies which can be done to for rehabilitation and uh, which uh, includes exercises uh, speech therapy and uh, some other uh, medications can also be used to bring back the uh, person to a normal life but it is it is usually takes a lot of time because uh, damage to the nerves is not easy to uh, recover so that is all for today and uh, hopefully i'll see you in the next lecture until then bye